it's time to finalize my clutch and brake system. To start out, I went ahead and bench bled my brake master cylinder. Some racing brake fluid is added. Use something soft and rounded to bleed the master. If you use something sharp, you can damage the bore inside the master cylinder. The master cylinder is fully bled when the plunger will hold firm for about 30 seconds. Now onto the manual brake install. So the manual brakes have a lot of items that need to be stacked up together. The GM master cylinder uses this plate, gasket, washer, and then this small spacer. The washer keeps the rod from falling out. It's very important because if that rod falls out, you will have no brakes. The stack up is master cylinder, thick plate, thin plate, and then the gasket. The master cylinder is installed. Then the rear doubler plate is put on, followed by the pedal box. For anyone interested, this doubler plate also works with power brakes, and I should be selling them very soon. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Four new lock nuts are added. And this bolt goes on top of the pedal box, but I am unable to actually film that. I went ahead and tightened the lock nuts while my roommate held the bolts from the other side. This is not really something you can do by yourself. The brake pedal goes in next. So these manual brakes use a modified pin height. If you're interested in that, I'll be making an upcoming video on a complete manual brake conversion guide. This clutch pedal has been modified with one of my CNC stainless pins. This allows you to use the 4th generation TIC master cylinder with a 3rd generation clutch pedal, and this is all without any welding. All it takes is some grinding and it bolts right up. Install the clutch pedal and support rod. I'll also be selling these clutch pins very soon, so stay tuned for that. I went ahead and put the brake pin washer and cotter pin in. And the Tick 4th generation master cylinder goes in next. And then my custom firewall brace is installed. I'll also be making versions of this doubler plate that will work with factory steering columns. It will reinforce the firewall at the steering column and also support the master cylinder. Line up the clutch support rods with the master cylinder. Tighten down the clutch master bolts and then the main pedal box bolt. The brake pedal rod is lengthened and locked down. It'll be adjusted later on when the car is actually running. The clutch pedal rod is screwed in and pressed into the custom pin. The Tickmaster comes with its own threaded rod, but I kinda messed it up, so I had to make a new one. Another feature of my custom CNC pin is that it uses the factory pin clip.
The clutch rod is lengthened, roughly, and then tightened down. This will be adjusted later on when my car actually runs. My racing steering column goes in next. It bolts in exactly where the factory steering column mount used to be. The solid astro shaft is installed and the bolts tightened down. And nothing is binding or rubbing, so that's good. I mounted my clutch master cylinder reservoir up where the factory relays used to be. The hose connects to the master cylinder with a simple clamp. I reconnected my custom brake lines from the master cylinder to my proportioning valve with me trying to avoid making a huge mess. I used a power bleeder to bleed the brakes. With all four wheels up in the air, bleeding was pretty quick. However, with the system being brand new, it took a lot of fluid to purge out all the air in the lines. Make sure to neutralize any brake fluid spills with some soapy water. The clutch master cylinder dash 4AN line goes on next. Some heat shield will keep the headers from nuking the fluid. The clutch fluid reservoir is filled up just to the line. And then my brother pumped the pedal while I held the plunger open. This helps get the bulk of the air out of the master cylinder. Once that's done, the line then connects to the slave cylinder that's in the transmission. This speed bleeder makes things pretty easy. Have a buddy pump the pedal while you hold the bleeder open. It's that simple. And now I have a working clutch. This LS7 clutch is actually surprisingly light. The manual brake deflection is also pretty good. With a full effort press, the master cylinder only deflects about a sixteenth of an inch. The speed bleeder is zip tied to the T56 for now, I'll probably do something better later on. A metal zip tie keeps the clutch line from being nuked by the very hot headers.
And that's it. If you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon and remember to follow me on Instagram.